Amen. As it is the custom of the house, we're going to ask you if you would stand in reverence and in deference to the reading of God's holy word. Amen. That's found in the book of 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. Amen. And we're going to begin reading at verse number 19. Amen. 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. And we're going to begin reading at verse number 19. It's on screen for you as well. For those of you who desire to follow alongside with us on screen, when you have it, shout it out by saying, I have it. Amen. Amen. It reads as such, it says, for though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews, I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law I became as those that are under the law that I might gain them that are under the law to them that are outside of the law or without the law I became as one that was outside of the law or without the law however being not outside of the law to God but under the law to Christ that I might gain them that are outside of the law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, amen, that we may grow and be sanctified thereby. We want to use for a topic for the next few moments, learning how to master mixing things up, amen. Say, I got to learn how to master mixing things up amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord amen here's the point of the message family mixed methods doesn't mean or equate or necessitate a mixed message just because the method is mixed or varies it does not necessitate the fact that the message is mixed or varies any deviation from the norm we understand that it makes most people uncomfortable and when I say most people I'm also talking about myself we get accustomed to things as they are and when things deviate from the way it normally is, usually our instincts causes us to become somewhat uncomfortable. And people are generally uncomfortable with change because, amen, of number one, the fear of the unknown. They become very uncomfortable with change because they are afraid of what they don't know. Number two, people are uncomfortable with change because of a loss of control. People are uncomfortable with change because, amen, their habits and their comfort is now being shifted. People become uncomfortable with change because of a fear of failure. People become uncomfortable with change because some of us are attached to the past. People become uncomfortable with change because of social pressures. People become uncomfortable with change because sometimes there is a lack of resources. And people become uncomfortable with change because of their past negative experiences. And these factors, and sometimes they combine forces, it's not just one of these factors, it becomes a combination of factors 
amen, and these forces join themselves together and they create a significant barrier to embracing everybody shout change. Yeah, I, you didn't even want to shout it. Yeah, you, I mean, the word change just rubs you the wrong way. Amen. And the reason it rubs you the wrong way, sometimes change is clearly obvious and it's clearly necessary. However, amen, it's a barrier to embrace the fact that I need to pursue it also, I'm clearly aware that things are not to stay the same in my life. Uh, um, I, I have lived, amen, for 43 beautiful years, and I know all about the discomfort that comes alongside with change. Uh, people fear that which they don't know. And, and, and sometimes it, it's obvious that I need to make a self-improvement or I need to learn something new uh, but because I'm so afraid of what I don't know I'm forced to stay where I am and, and sometimes amen this sense of a loss of control and uh, uh, sometimes I, I'm in control of a particular aspect or component of life and giving someone else an opportunity to have control in this space or exploring a new opportunity for myself, it makes me uncomfortable. Uh, uh, my habits and my comforts causes me uh, to resist change because I'm unsettled by the unpredictability of my tomorrow. Uh, it's obvious that I, I'm not going to be able to calculate exactly how things are going to play out and because it's unpredictable, I'm just going to continue to do what I've been doing. And this fear of failure, this, this potential for failure seems elevated, especially now that I'm moving into a new space in life. And, and some of us are so attached to our past. There are emotional attachments to both good and bad experiences. And because my emotions are wrapped up in a thing, even though it is potentially toxic, uh, it's all I know. And, and all of my emotions are associated with it. And I don't know what life would look like if I moved out of this relationship into a healthier relationship. Relationship because I've been in this relationship for so long I have an attachment to it even though sometimes our attachments are actually very unhealthy and then there's this whole sense of social pressure this is a big one uh, because many of us worry about judgment and not fitting in into a particular space Nobody wants to be judged. Uh, uh, and if the whole group is doing a thing, then uh, because the group is doing it, sometimes we fall into the box of group think because I don't want to be judged for being different. Sometimes making the necessary change in your life will necessarily cause you to stand out from the crowd. And the moment you step outside of the box, people will begin to notice you, to look at you, to critique you, and to judge you. And sometimes because we don't desire that attention, we stay with the group. We stay with group think. We do what everybody else is doing. When in Rome, we do as the Romans do, even though God has called us to be something other than a Roman. I got no help right here. Uh, we are attached. We, we don't like to not it in. We know that our immediate circle, our family, and our friends are no good for our future. But we want to fit in. We want to fit in with our family. We want to be received at the family reunion. We want to be connected to the, uh -huh, the text thread where we're gossiping and talking about folk uh, or laughing and sending memes and emojis. So we, we don't want to get outside of the text. We don't want to be discarded from the group. We don't want to be deleted off of somebody's social media uh, friend group. So we 
do the things that causes us to stay connected to a thing even though we know this thing is not productive is not conducive to the productivity that God is calling me to have in my life I want to change but I don't want to change because I'm scared that the pressure from my social group is going to be too much for me to bear beloved of God you got to get over this and you got to learn how to move outside of the box you got to learn how to deal with the energy of the attention because you are persuaded on the path that God has set for your life even if it ain't a God matter it could be a life matter you're stuck in a situation that's literally no good for your life life but because that's the way my family always did it I'm stuck in doing this that's the way my peer group talks that's the way my peer group dresses that's the way my peer group responds this is these are the places my peers go you got to learn how to step outside of that and say there is something unique that I'm being called and directed towards somebody say help me me. And then change can become difficult because sometimes there's a perceived lack of resources. When you are making a change, often you need new skills, skills that you don't currently have. When you're making a change, sometimes you're going to have to spend some energy, some effort. It's going to cost you a whole lot of time to make the change that is necessary to move you to another level in life. And sometimes we get intimidated about the fact that I don't have the skills for the job. I, I, I don't have the resources for the home. I, I, I just don't have the wherewithal for, for, for what God is sending me to. And because I'm looking at where I am now, I will refuse to believe that there is something on the horizon that is better for my life. I look at my right now as if that this is the end all be all for the entirety of my life. And the reason why you're here on today is because heaven sent you here to hear this, that that is not true, beloved. The way it is now is not the way it always will be. You may be in a low place, low space now. You may be at a deficit now, but if you keep trusting God, if you keep your eyes connected to your faith, God has a way of moving your life to an atmosphere, to a place, to a sphere, oh my God, to a paradigm that you never even imagined, but you can't get started stuck in the rut of where I am now. Yes, I don't have the education now. Yes, I, I, I don't have the experience now. Yes, I don't have the money now, but is right now is not my future. In my future, I still see a vision for my life and I'm going to make some shifts in my life so that one day I will have the education. One day I will have the experience. One day I will have the skills to move me from the gutter, amen, to a place of paradise. I refuse to stay where I am. There's a scripture that says why sit we here and die beloved of God I will not settle for death I'm going to get up I'm going to make a move somebody shout right now I feel the Holy Ghost amen I understand that sometimes it don't look like we got it but God says I cattle the cattle on a thousand hills it belongs to me you don't have it right now stop that faithless talk you saw the vision for your life don't you allow the enemy to come in and snatch the vision out of your spirit snatch the joy out of your soul snatch the 
the love out of your heart snatch the peace out of your mind I have a peace that surpasses all understanding I know it's chaos everywhere but I got my mind on my future I got my mind on my faith I have my mind on my God come on and give God some praise for it God bless you in this house Holy Ghost and then here it is brother Barbara here it is sometimes our past negative experiences they have traumatized us the drama from yesterday uh huh it, it, it haunts us in every relationship we find ourselves in so because of what happened on yesterday uh huh I'm still holding on to the pain of my past and I can't get past the pain of my past so because of what happened to me on yesterday my mind becomes closed as it pertains to the possibilities that still remain beloved of God yesterday was yesterday today is today and tomorrow will be tomorrow and all three of those days will look differently you cannot <laughs> you cannot connect yesterday to right now and say because that happened on yesterday that's my destiny that's my future and that defines the rest of my life you may have failed the class on last year but God gave you another year which means I have another opportunity I came here to holler at you on today get up and go for it one more time you gotta learn how to change your situation and it begins with shaking the spirit of fear God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Power and soundness of mind. So these barriers are nothing more than weapons of the enemy to sabotage your future. All of these are arrows in Satan's wheelhouse that he shoots right into your mind, your heart, your spirit until it corrupts your soul and you stay stuck because you refuse by faith to be bold enough to shift and change your destiny. We need to be intentional on today. We're coming against the fear of the unknown. We're coming against the fear of losing control. We're coming against the spirit of habits and comforts. We're coming against this fear of failure. We're coming against this spirit of attachment to our past. We're coming, we're doing whole warfare everybody shout whole warfare against social pressure I don't care who's doing what on your row you know the person on your row is pressuring you don't you let what's happening in your atmosphere stop you from making the move that's necessary for where God has designed and desired for you to go you ought to give God praise right there and I'm coming against the trauma of my past I don't care how sheltered your life was I don't care how many resources you were bought up with everybody in this room has trauma something has happened in your life and what happened in your life was for the purposes of Satan to break your spirit 
Now, what you have to do, you have to understand that what the enemy meant for evil, God can turn that past trauma into your future power. You can stop having nightmares. And you have to speak to yourself and your spirit before you go to bed at night and say these nightmares will cease in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. I'm talking practically some of us are waiting for the next bad thing to happen you're traumatized you're nervous about everything you're scared of your shadow you're thinking today might be my day And you listen and consume to so much bad news that bad news has been wired into your psyche and you are afraid of even speaking against that spirit because your faith has been just compromised and sabotaged by all of these historical things that has happened in your life. Somebody say, the blood of Jesus. Now, I know that's old school. But the blood still works. High glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Praying over your house still works. Putting the oil on your dashboard still works. Looking at your mirror and saying you are a child of God. You will win. You will conquer. You are more than a conqueror in, in Christ Jesus. That still works. Family life isn't working. Finances aren't working. Health isn't working. Physical health, mental health, spiritual health. Nothing's working. You can't seem to get ahead. Your life is feeling unfulfilled. Your life is drama laced. You find yourself constantly stressed, depressed, anxious. And all of these things require you. Ah, it requires you to change. And many and most times the shift is not only clearly necessary. But also, not only is it necessary, catch this part, it's also clear and obvious what the next step ought to be. <laughs> Y'all didn't like that part. Not only do you know something needs to change, you know what needs to change. Stop acting confused. I'm trying to say it as nicely as I can. You know you need to delete that person off your profile. You, need, you know you need to throw that thing away that's in your house. You know you need to become more committed to your church. You, you already know it. You don't need somebody barking down your throat. You don't need God to show up in a dream. You, you don't need a special memo. The things that you need to do, you already know. You just got to get too radical to decide within yourself that I'm not going to put up with myself anymore I'm sick of myself oh y'all didn't like that part you wanted me to tell me tell you I'm sick of my neighbor no I'm sick of myself and until you make up your mind that I'm not going to put up with the foolishness of myself any further, the devil got to get out of my life. Your life won't shift, beloved. You got to learn how to mix it up. You can't be too terrified to mix it up. You, you may not understand exactly why you're here, but the good news is that I understand why you're here. <laughs> and you're here because this is a moment of provocation from heaven that has been designated and designed just for you. It, it may not have been the place you wanted to be today. <laughs> 
it may not be the preacher that you wanted to hear today and it may not have been the message that you wanted to hear today but you're here today and I know the reason why you're here today is because heaven wanted you to hear it like this Oh, uh, nobody, I, I, I hear one God, I thank you, and a couple of head nods, amen. We all may as well just celebrate the fact that God knows best. <laughs> this moment is to inform you that there needs to be a mix-up in your methods so that there can be a makeup in your ministry there needs to be a mix up in your methods you need to change it up that's what I mean by mix up there needs to be a mix up in what you're doing your methods so that there can be a makeup a renewal a revival a redemption in your ministry and you're you're thinking ministry what is that <laughs> ministry I don't have a ministry. Oh, yes, you do. It is what you have been called on earth to do. Your ministry is the reason why you exist. And let me inform you, just in case you missed the memo or you've never heard the memo. You're here on purpose, on earth. On purpose, by God's design, for purpose. And your ministry is the reason why you exist. It's the reason why God created you. It's the reason why out of all the egg was flooded with, you were the one that survived. Let's make it plain. You were the sperm that fertilized the egg and it wasn't by happenstance. God knew what he was doing. Ministry is the purpose for your life. It is the unique thing that only you can do the way you do it. Ministry is your gift to the world in which you exist. Your Give to the world, not the world giving you something. Your ministry is what you have been called to give to this world. And you have one. Your ministry is your selfless act of service to provide the solution to the problem only you can fix. And you have one. Did you catch that one? Your ministry is your selfless act of service to provide the solution to the problem that only you have the ability to fix. Can't nobody do it but you. And that's why you're here. Because there's a ministry on your life. And if you didn't have one, God would have never let you show up. Your ministry is not about you. Your ministry is about your selfless, not your selfish. Your selfless act of service to the problems. You are the solution. And you're the only one on the whole earth that can fix it. Let me make it plain. My neighbor committed suicide. last week and maybe my ministry if it was what God had called me to do and it was activated maybe the ministry that was on my life could have been the ministry that reached him like nobody else on the face of the earth could do I didn't say nobody else could preach the gospel I said that there is something unique on your life that can only reach certain people is your act of service is what you're here to give to the earth and I think a whole lot of people are losing their lives because we haven't activated our ministry we haven't gotten bold enough to change to 
change our paradigm so that our lives would be fulfilled. And I use that as an example. I'm not saying that I was the person called to his life, but what if? What if you were the unique one that God created to help facilitate salvation in the life of your neighbor? Don't you know the people that you live beside are your neighbors for a reason? Uh, Ooh, don't you know the persons that's on your row are the persons that's on your row for a reason it's not by mistake it's divine intervention there's something that you are supposed to give selflessly not expecting anything per se in return Ooh, Jesus that is going to provide the solution to the problem mother that only you can fix purpose is getting ready to hit your life I, I, I thought y'all were going to be I said purpose is getting ready to hit your life but Everybody shout but. but. But you have to master the mix. You have to master the art of change. You can't continue to do it the same way in every context. As a matter of fact, you have to become a champion of change. You got to learn how to love change. Oh my God. Somebody say amen. amen. So now the correlation between what I just shared and the text is that the text answers four critical questions that must be answered if you're ever going to master change and we know that things can't stay the same because your ministry has to come alive and purpose has to hit your life we clearly see that things have to change and we need to start praying show me how Jesus the text answers these four questions what is the spirit or the motivation behind your actions what is the level of understanding of your environment? What are you willing to sacrifice? And lastly, what is the end game? Now, the first question, what is the spirit of motivation behind your actions? Paul said in verse number 19, he says, I am free from everybody, which means I don't owe nobody anything. I, 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 I am not in debt to anyone However, even though I'm at liberty, I'm free, I have made myself a servant. That selfless act of service. I have made myself a servant to how many? To everybody. Why? Because I want to win more of them. Everybody shall win. win. See, winning isn't for everybody, but uh, winning is for those persons that have the right spirit and motivation behind their actions. He says, I'm making myself your servant because ultimately I want to win more people for Jesus Christ. Whatever it takes, I, I, I need to make this shift in order for folk to come into proper and right relationship with Christ so I'm changing my environment I'm changing my methods I'm mixing things up because I need to win more folk for Jesus and that's the spirit that should be behind the church the church should be willing to mix it up just a little bit oh my god y'all ain't say nothing right here y'all so stuffy oh, but we ought to be willing to mix it up a little bit so we might win what more of those that are lost but if the church is 
so enamored with her traditions, so enamored with the way that she's always done things, then the church is more concerned about herself and she's not concerned about the laws. The church has to learn how to fall in love with the lost souls so that more persons would be exposed to the saving message that's only found in Jesus Christ. Family, it's time for our neighbors to stop committing suicide. There's time for us to share the message of hope in such a way that persons are walking out of darkness and stepping into light. When are we going to get tired of our family dying, our friends dying, our neighbors dying, our church dying? We got to shake ourselves out of this mentality that this is good enough. I'm ready to mix it up. I'm ready to serve however is necessary so that I may win more of them. I know I ain't going to win everybody. I might not win all of my children, but I need to win more of my children. I've got to mix it up. Got to mix it up. I got to mix it up. There has to be the right motivation if the change is going to stick. If you're changing because you want to become a celebrity, that's not the right motivation. Even if you're changing if you want to fill your church up, that's not the right motivation. The motivation should be, I want to see souls saved. The second question when you're mastering how to mix things up, you need to understand your environment. Yes, yes. Paul said, when I'm with the Jews, guess what? I became a Jew to win Jews. When I was with folk that was under the bondage of the law, I became under bondage to the law too that I may win those that are in that situation. I'm becoming that, but I ain't saying that. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to where you are. I'm meeting you where you are, but I'm not staying where you are. When I meet you where you are, I have enough anointing to pull you out. See, people always talk about the fact that Jesus... He hung out with the prostitutes, the tax collectors, the sinners. But what they leave out is that when Jesus showed up in their space, he did meet them where they were, but they didn't stay where they were. They said to themselves, I need to come out of this space and I got to follow Jesus. Because his anointing was so heavy. Anointing, I use a fancy word. Anointing is the thing that empowers you to do what you wouldn't ordinarily be able to do with your own power. It's the power that comes from God. God gives you what to say. God shows you how to talk. God shows you where to go. It's the anointing that shows you the what, the when, the where, and the how. And it's time for us to stop being unanointed. The reason why your church is empty because there's not enough anointing in here. Oh, glory to his name. To draw somebody out of where they are. Oh my God. All right, family. The third question is, what are you willing to sacrifice? Paul said, I, I'm sacrificing my own strength. To the weak, I became weak. I'm willing to give you everything because I want to save your life. And if you're going to become a champion of change, you got to be willing to lose some people. Mm. Mm -hmm. You got to be willing to prune that tree. You ain't going to be able to carry everybody with you. 
got to be willing to lose some. But you're not going to allow anybody to become more valuable than the vision that God has placed on your life. I'm not getting ready to settle and sell out for you for the vision that God has placed on my life sometimes in your changing you're going to offend folk <laughs> yeah they're going to be offended it's, and, and we, 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 we don't celebrate them being offended but it's part of the process and you're going to have to decide am I more willing to hold on to this relationship or am I more desiring to follow God's design for my life? What are you willing to sacrifice is a question that you're going to have to answer if you're going to master the mix-up. And finally, the last question that you have to ask if you're going to become a champion of change and you're going to master the mix-up is what is the end game? Somebody say, what is the end game? He says, I'm doing all of this for the sake of the gospel that I may share with those that have received the gospel in the blessings of God. The end game is that there will be an unspeakable joy after this. The end game is that all of my trauma is getting ready to be reversed. The end game is that my midnight is getting ready to turn into joy. The end game is that every broken thing in my life is getting ready to be healed. The end game is that I'm getting ready to restore and redeem the relationship that I have with my God. The end game is that I'm getting ready to be more effective. I'm getting ready to make more impact. There's going to be more results in my life that has ever happened before. The end game is that the devil is going to be under my feet and God is going to be exalted in my life. The end game is that there will be victory after this. The end game is that I will have a joy unspeakable and full of glory. The end game is well done, my good and faithful servant. Into the joy of the Lord. Come on, family, clap your hands. Jump up on your feet and give God the praise because some things are getting ready to change in your life. Some things are getting ready to shift in your life. Some mountains are getting ready to be moved in your life. They're getting ready to be a new victory. Give God glory all over this place. Come on, give them glory, family. Come on, give them glory, family. Come on, give them glory. Hallelujah. We're standing all over the house. Our hands are raised. Father, we love you. We praise you. Somebody shout, we love you, Lord. We praise you. We magnify you. We worship you on today because we are so grateful. We are so grateful for your word, your direction, your insight, your instructions for our life. So we come with our hands lifted in the spirit of worship. Father, we say to you on today that we are, we are ready. We are ready to make that shift. We are, we are ready to make that move. We are ready, God, amen, for those things that are necessary for us to accomplish your design and desire for our life to be brought into formation. You are worthy, Lord, so because you, you are so worthy, whatever needs to move, we say remove it right now. Somebody shall move it right now. Hallelujah. Remove it right now, God. 
Father, I pray for that hand that is lifted. Give them the boldness, God. The boldness to step outside of the parameters of their comforts, their habits, uh, the, those things that have become normative for them. Father, I pray, Lord God, that a worship will fall in their spirit, that they will say, you, Lord, you are worthy, and no one can worship you for me. And God, I lift my hands and praise you, God, because of the things that you have done in my life. I thank you, God, for the shift that has happened in my life. God, I praise you. I magnify you. I, I adore Door your holy name. Come on, lift that hand. Say, God, do it for me. God, save me. God, heal me. God, deliver me. God, put a worship in my spirit. God, I present my whole body a living sacrifice unto God. Oh, I present it, God. It is my reasonable service. I lay everything on the altar and I say, Lord, I surrender. Have thine own way with my life. God, bless me. God, use me. God, get the glory out of my life. God whatever needs to change I say Lord have your way come on somebody shout Lord have your way come on shout Lord have your way come on one more time Lord have your way God move it in my life God shift it in my life God redeem in my life God renew in my life God restore in my life God bring me to a new horizons God you can get the glory out of my life if it's your will I say yes God your be Beautiful. God, you amazing. God, you omnipotent. God, you all powerful. God, you everywhere. You're walking with me. You're talking with me. You're leading me. You're guiding me. God, I thank you for it. I thank you for it. I thank you for the shift. I thank you for the move. I thank you, God.